just a book series called <laughs> Why Would You Not Just Line That Circle, That Hole in the Ground okay, what it is, with Nuclear like, Weapons? <laughs> Oh look, monster! Sort of like Boom! Like a Nazca yeah. thing where it's always dark out and it's set in this metro uh, metropolis. And the idea is there is an afterlife. It's been quantified. We use spirits to power our appliances. It's called Geist power. We run the entire grid off of necromantic energy, which is caused, which is created in um, necro reactors, where all the dead people, all your bones go into this reactor. And the energy coming off of the bones powers the city. Also, as they're shipping the bones into really the reactor, good. they've got like uh, sort of quality control who goes through, just psychics who go through and tap into all the bones. And oh, there's an artist who has never realized how they were never appreciated during their life, but their work is fantastic. Pull those bones out. We can share the memories of their work and everything with the populace. Mm -hmm. And it's just. You can take everything off of these bones, use it as a power source, and it's very green. green. It's very green. <laughs> <laughs> it's soil green. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to see that well, more uh, science. I'm um, so more well, of a science well, look at this. Well, you know, so mm -hmm. as the person is dying, you suck out all the memories, right? That mm -hmm. would be, you know. Well, no, they're dead. And yeah, I know. I'm just bones. saying that. That uh, reminds me of Philip Jose Fox's book, Dead Man's Land. Where they uh, recreated the, almost the entire, at least adult population of planet Earth for, for some, I forget, I forget what the point of the experiment was, but it was a, a, a fascinating series of novels. Mm -hmm. People were, create, were recreated in perfect body, or perfect uh, young adult bodies, but they had their, their own personality and alleys and memories in it, intact. Yeah, it was River World, right? Yeah. River World, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said trailer. Is that good? Yes. Okay. The first, the first few books were okay. Books are fantastic. This is a sci-fi oh. series too. Yeah. Did anyone see the series? I heard. Yeah, it. I saw the series. It was passable. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't great. It wasn't wasn't good. It wasn't the worst sci-fi series I've seen. Now, it was on Siffy. Yeah, it's talking yeah. about. Siffy. You're talking yeah. about picking over the bones of the dead people. Made me think of. Uh, it made me think of like some Larry Devon stories um, and going through harvesting the corpsicles yes. <laughs> when, when they, the technology became advanced enough to make it with the anti-rejection serums. Well, so there's a lot of stuff. I love Larry Niven and a lot of the things he did that the movies have borrowed a little piece here and there, you know, elevators to the sky and all this stuff. And there's just so much more that he did. I mean, you think about all the really fantastic, you know, writers from that era and, you know, Asimov and stuff, and the Hollywood people just have not gotten any of that. We need Tales of the Draco well, Tavern to be made into a series. <laughs> Has Foundation ever made a movie? No. There's a, I don't know if anyone has ever read uh, Rick Spoor. I don't recognize the name. It's spelled R Y K. Um, he's relatively new. I think he got his first book done about, published about 10 years ago. And he's only got about a half dozen out at the moment, if that. He's got an interesting one um, series. He's only got the first two out now. But one of the major characters <coughs> is a guy who was created by essentially. A bunch of mad scientists slash sci-fi 